I had a guy one time in my life, and he and I were close, and we were business partners for years and years. And, um, and I, I got busy at that. I was really busy at that part of my life, and uh, there's no excuse for it. I loved this guy. And, I, you know, I'd text him. I'd be thinking about, hey, buddy, hope you're doing great out there thinking of it. You know, just a little stuff like that, and, you know. And, and I'll never forget one day, he calls me up, we go out to lunch, and he says, listen, I appreciate all your texts, but I want a real friendship. And I, I mean, I was just so taken aback, like, dude, it is a real friendship. I'm busy as heck. I ain't got time to sit around, you know, sing kumbaya with you. At least sent you a text. But in his love language, he needed more than just a text. He needed me to communicate in other various mediums for him to feel affirmed and realize that I esteemed him. Does this make sense? And so you can't just rely on one. You have to use many of these in combination for each relationship. How would my marriage be if I relied on voice messages? <laughs> Right? How would my relationship with my parents be if it were merely emails? Right? You can't reduce it. You've got to use a whole bunch of them. But yet, if my wife got a, got a card from me, or a love letter on a pillow, or a funny text. Have you ever seen the kid snippets that are out right now, the little kids? I think it's already starting. Have you guys seen these? Where they record little kids talking like three and four-year-olds, and then adults act them out and lip sync them? Oh, they're hilarious. They're, and my kids are all into them, and we have them all memorized by heart, you know. So every now and then, I'll just text my wife one of them. Josh Groban doesn't get his own pizza. And I'll just send it to her. <laughs> and I'm picturing her getting it in the middle of something. She's cracking up, you know, and she'll answer me back something from the kid. It's just, you got to have those kind of, now, if I relied on only humorous texts to Terry, and we never had the face-to-face -face across candlelight, how do you think my marriage would go after a while? Right? She'd say, you, you and Josh Groban go get your own pizza. You know, it'd be something like that. <laughs> so you have to use lots of these in combination based on, based on the situation. For instance, at work, you probably don't want to be texting your boss something about kid snippets all the time, right? That might be an email. It might be a meeting. It might be a gathering. So there's appropriate ones, but you've got to use multiple ones and use the appropriate ones. Now, many of these applications are specific, but they each have their own advantages and disadvantages. For instance, which one should you use for expressing romantic feelings to your spouse or significant other? Should you use face-to-face? -face? That'd be a good one, wouldn't it? Phone? Yeah. Phone message? Okay. Voice messaging apps? Yeah. Text? Emails? Maybe. It's getting a little thin on the email to your spouse, right? Video conferencing? Well, if you're traveling. Social networking sites? <laughs> I just want to tell my wife I love her on Facebook. How's that go? Right? Chat rooms? <laughs> forums? Start a new thread on the, on the Life Leadership Forum. Terry Brady's awesome. Right? How's that going to go? Right? So somebody, all right, which ones should you use to invite people to a party? Carrier pigeon might work good. <laughs> right? Which ones would you use for addressing a conflict? Email. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll send an email. I don't appreciate the way that you said that, right? How many have ever seen people try to handle conflict on an email? Man, I'm telling you what, that is a fart in church right there. <laughs> that does not work. That does not work. It leaves a permanent record. <laughs> they read it 10 times. They stew over it. They look at it and read They twist the words. All right, so don't... <laughs> Don't assume that you're communicating by using one of these or using the wrong ones in the wrong settings. Like the other day, Terry was trying to get a hold of this lady and she left her message, something about one of the kids' activities or something. The lady saw Terry at church and she said, I, this lady said this to Terry, I sent you a Facebook message. Like, Facebook message? How do you know I even check Facebook messages? Just so you know, I don't check Facebook messages. So stop sending them. There's millions of them in there. I've never answered it. They're just... If you send them, I'm never going to get them. My, my assistant goes in there, checks them once in a while, and there was a guy that had tried to contact me in there through Facebook message, and then later on he's all mad at me because I hadn't answered his message. Like, he, he thinks I saw it. Unfortunately, I don't spend my whole life reading through Facebook messages because I, I got carrier pigeons to answer for crying out loud. <laughs> then there's response times and expectations to consider. Response times and expectations. Because we have all this communication, the expected response times have gone down. How many people have ever sent you an email about something, and two hours and nine minutes later, they're firing off another one? Hey, did, aren't you, aren't, why are you not answering me? It's, it's ridiculous. So the, you got to almost kind of let people know your policy. You can have a communication policy in each one of these categories. And by the way, this is a great method to use. People respect policies.
And so we have established policies. I have policies on how I communicate. Lots of times I'll start working with somebody new and here's the policy on how I communicate. You ain't going to get me on Facebook. Ain't happening. Right? And I'm not going to answer the phone if I'm with someone else because I'm with who I'm with. If you're spending time with me at my house, we're conducting business, we're doing something together, you are not going to get interrupted by my phone call coming in. I'm not answering it. It won't even make a sound. My phone never makes a noise. It's always on stun. It's always off, quiet, silent, because I'm not going to be interrupted by it. We don't answer our phone at home. We'll be eating dinner and the phone rings. We don't jump up like a bunch of Pavlov's dogs to answer some sales call. We don't answer it. So we have a policy. Now, if, if I'm with someone and they're busy and they start talking over here and I can check a couple of texts and answer you real quick, I'll do that. But I'll let people know my policies right up front. And then there's certain times we'll take family time. And my policy is I'm going dark, man. We're just off. You ain't get me no matter what happens. You're going to have to light off an atomic bomb where I can see the mushroom cloud. Because for these six hours, I'm taking my boys to a ball game and there ain't nothing inter interrupting me. It's just I built the life that I built so I'd have that freedom to do those things. And that's our policy. Thank you.